Good morning, everyone, from the good. <laughs> Good in Bali, home to the best rice terraces, luscious waterfalls, monkey forests, and so much more. For the next six days, we're going to be taking you through the best things to do in Ubud, Bali in 2023. We travelled here from Munduk in northern Bali. If you want to see more of our time here, then watch this video. And we stayed in some epic places, which you can see in this video here. This popular tourist spot is one that's been on our bucket list for so long and we are so excited to see all there is to do here. Just taking a stroll around the bud for the first time. Loads of nice little shops, loads of nice little cafes. So I'm sure we're doing plenty of shopping and eating in the next four days. Hopefully. And now we've just come to the Monkey Forest Sanctuary and we're just walking on the entrance. just entered the monkey forest and read all the rules. It cost us 80 rupee to enter and yeah, so far a little bit intimidating. We're ever going to get our camera stolen but we'll wait and see. from the sacred monkey forest which was actually really quite nice not actually as touristy as we thought it was going to be or gimmicky very peaceful in there and yeah we, we enjoyed it we liked it we would recommend it um, and now we've just come to the art market and um, which has got some lovely little bits in we're not going to buy anything so we're trying not to buy the world as we travel the world really really nice Really, really colourful umbrellas, loads of lovely little market stalls, good vibes around. So, third day, take the gangster sunglasses off. Third day in Abud. Last night we went to a party at K Club. We randomly won a night in a villa there on Instagram just from liking some posts and sharing it. And then we got invited to a Halloween party, which was really cool. But we've just come to Pura Gurang Sawati Temple, I think. Well double, done. Ch we'll double check that name. Um, so yeah, it's incredible. Like there's all these rice terraces behind us, and I think it's pretty big. So we're going to go for a stroll and see what we find. We've both got a sarong on, which you get given just for a small donation at the entrance. There's a whole load of women trying to sell you them for like. God knows how much um, on the way in, but ignore them and then you get a free one when you get here and just donate to the temple. So do that. So it turns out there's a whole host of temples here. This is the one we came to see. Pure Gunung Kawi. There are six in total. So let's go check them out. Jadad, we paid 50 rupee, 50,000 rupee each to get in, which is three pounds. This is an old archaeological site, so this was all dug out in the face of these cliffs. So you can kind of see, it's very similar to how they dug out Petra. All built into the cliff face. Pretty epic. So this is the main site of the temple, and then we're going to just head up those stairs up there, and then I think you go into that part, which is where you need to wear the sarong. Um, but let's go see what it's saying. For a little bit of context, um, 
we're not really like huge temple people. We, um, when we went travelling in 2019, we did loads of temples. So now we tend to only go to some that are really special. So if we're saying it's good, it is actually it's good. good. <laughs> so in the main temple, this is called the Gateway to Heaven. You're supposed to stand in between the two gates and pray. temple is set within these beautiful rice terraces so you come see the temple see some waterfalls and also these stunning rice terraces so yeah definitely worth coming to so this whole site is massive and it's not just about the temple we've just been walking through loads of the rice terraces and now we've come through this little jungle area and we've got all these waterfalls behind us and then there's another temple up here in the rock so yeah, it's not just one temple, it's an amazing site. So I just decided to buy a kind of glass bead bracelet from this cute stall man, old guy. So I paid 60 rupiah, 60,000 rupiah. And honestly, like 10 seconds after, dropped it right in front of him. And the whole thing smashed. So, money well spent. Just down about 10 15 minutes sweaty walk to the next temple, which is called Turta Empal. And at this one, you can bathe in the holy water, which is what we plan to do mainly to cool off. When you come into the temple, you get given a song that you can't get wet. And then when you come in, you'll come to the holy waters, and then to your right is this kind of locker area. You then pay 10,000 each for the green ones, which you can go in the water in, and there are locker facilities here. So we're just going to go get changed and then go for a shower. Just done the first 15 what are they, like showers, I suppose. And now we're going through to what is the second part, which just looks a lot busier, so quite a cute. So we finished the shower slash cleansing in the holy water at Turta Empal. Took about 45 minutes most probably in total. We went on a Sunday so there's quite a lot of local people there. We've done a quick turnaround and now we're heading down into a bird. So we'll just get a grab and down there. And then we're hopefully gonna go do the Kampuan Ridge Walk, which is one of the main things to do in a bird. So yeah, looking forward to that. Every day is laundry day when you're travelling. I think we only did it last week, we've got to do it again. So we're just heading out into the town of Ibbard again, going to get some laundry done, as Lewis just said, and hopefully going to do the ridge walk or the rice terrace walk. One of the two. Guys, the laundry is in £4.50 for six kilos. It's getting cheaper by the day. Liv's getting hangry, so we're off to find some food. We haven't actually eaten since. This morning at like 8 a.m. Yeah, and we're like slightly hungover, so it's not ideal. So, first job food, and then we should hopefully make the sunset. Good evening, or salamat evening. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what eating is. <laughs> um, so we just headed out to the Camboyan, Camboyan Ridge Walk. And yeah, really beautiful, lovely scenes, sunset, so we're hoping to get some orange skies. 
stay tuned. Delicious looking sunset for us tonight. Lovely little walk. I'll show you some drone shots because that really captures the beauty of it. the ridge walk so we did it for sunset reading a lot online loads of people say to do it for sunrise so then there's no other people there I mean I'm not sure it's worth getting up at sunrise for that one I think you're better off doing that for say the rice terraces because there was maybe I don't know at any given time like just 10 people near us it wasn't that crowded whatsoever so yeah I think you can go there any time and it was pretty nice going up there for for sunset, so yeah, up to you, but just a bit of advice. Morning guys, this is day three or four. It's technically day four, but it's our first, a third full day in Ubud. And we tried to get up at sunrise, but then we're really tired. So we went back to sleep. Um, we've checked out of our place because we actually have won. I know, we won a night stay in a hotel, which is really exciting. Um, we've made our way to Tegalang, Teg, how do I say it? Tegal, oh I can't say it already, Teg, Tegalalang, Tegalalang rice terraces. Um, and Lewis is flying the drone because it just always looks better from above, but let me show you what I can see. First impressions of these rice terraces are a little bit underwhelmed. Um, I think you see so much of these on Instagram and it looks like it's just, you know, like rice terraces in the middle of nowhere and very authentic, like people just working on them, like the, that's all they're used for. Reality is there's a lot of swings and entrance points and fees and cafes and tacky bits. Dare I say it, like signs and stuff, um, which for us personally kind of ruins it a little bit. Um, and there's obviously a huge main road next to them as well, so all of the magical shots you see are taken from a certain angle. Um, but yeah, definitely worth coming to, I think, if you're in Ubud. We're actually going to go check out some other rice terraces about an hour and a bit's drive from Ubud tomorrow, which actually it's a UNESCO heritage site. So I'm hoping that that will give us the experience that really we were hoping for here. So we've come to our first waterfall of the day, which is called Kanta Lampo Waterfall. Thankfully, not too much of a height to get down to it. And we've just paid I think it was 50,000 each. We'll check with Liv how much we paid to get in, because she paid. But yeah, this one looks pretty epic, but we've heard rumours that this gets really, really busy. So fingers crossed it's not too bad today. left Cantalampo waterfall. Cantalampo was 20 uh, rupiah per person to get in, almost said Bartman. And now we are at Timbua, Tim, Timbana, Timbumana, Timbumana waterfall. <laughs> um, that would be good for the outtakes. And yeah, it's actually got a really lovely walk on the way down. Lots of rice terraces here. We just stopped for a coffee overlooking the rice terraces. Um, yeah, and we'll let you know more about it when we get there. Again, today we have got a driver slash guide. Um, he's called Jun. We'll introduce him in a minute and he is brilliant. So 
If anyone's coming here and needs a driver, let us know. So we paid 20,000 each to get into Timbermana. And yeah, that was a really nice waterfall. Quite easy, just short walk, like five minutes. A single waterfall, the pool at the bottom that you can swim in. And we got really lucky. There was like two people there when we got down there. And then as we like finished taking some photos, about 30, 40 people arrived. So ideally timed. And we're now just at our last waterfall of the day. It's Suat waterfall, 25,000 to get in here. And we're just heading down. And we think at this one you can get on like a bamboo raft and head out to the waterfall. We're looking forward to that. is our penultimate day in Ubud and we've made an epic journey to Nung Nung waterfall which is halfway between Munduk and Ubud. Hour draw. Now we're gonna go check out that waterfall we paid 45,000 for two of us to get in. Yeah. yeah. Which is one. Don't know. Two pound fifty. Yeah. Cheap one. by far the most powerful waterfall we've been to but so beautiful. The hike down is a little bit challenging but okay but I think the hike up is going to be a hell of a lot harder. If you want a quieter, less touristy waterfall, this is definitely a good one to come to. We have made it the second rest area on the climb back up so there's two which kind of tells you everything you need to know. I think we're nearly there, but it's so cute. We're right in the jungle, so it's sweaty business. Heart right moment. On 3-5. We made it up alive just about. <laughs> now we're making our way to Lucky Lucky Waterfall. We have just arrived at Lucky Lucky Waterfall. This one's slightly more expensive than others, so it's 50,000 each per person, so about three pounds. We're reliably informed that it's a much easier walk than the last one, so our driver is taking a little break back at the car and having a coffee, so we're gonna head down now. Just made it down to Lucky Lucky. This is probably the second busiest waterfall we've been to other than Pantalampo. That was relatively busy. This is the second busiest, but really stunning. Still worth waiting to get yourself a photo if you want one. So we are at Jatalui Rice Terraces and it might be raining but already we are really, I was going to say impressed, we're not impressed, we are what's wowed. Wow. These are the biggest rice terraces in Bali and everyone goes on about the Tagalog ones which are just, I mean, I thought they were so average. 
these are insane. I can't even, it's so vast. Hopefully it stops raining, we can fly the drone and then you'll be able to see actually how big this place is. Way better than Tagalalang. Yeah, don't bother with Tagalalang, just come here in my opinion anyway. So we've just come for a quick pit stop, very quickly, to a little cafe called The Rustic Barley. And these views are incredible. I'm probably going to say so much in this vlog, I'm really sorry, it's probably really annoying. I just can't stress enough how much you should come here over to Galalang. Even the cafe is like super cute, no swings, no photo moments or anything like that, just really like nice and authentic, so yeah, big fans. Just checking out from our final stay in a bud in a very very busy six days we plan to stay here for six days thinking that it would be fairly chill but it's been pretty full-on hasn't it yeah really full-on but epic all the same so much to do here loads of cool restaurants cafes day clubs just yeah absolute vibes everything pretty much so yeah so now we are off to the embassy to extend our visa then we're heading to the airport for a very, very exciting trip, which you will see in the next video. Thanks so much for tuning in to our video on Ubud. If you like what we do here, make sure you like, share so others can find us, and of course, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. See you later. Hello. Day's done, guys. Day's over. Big day. Oh, yes. Anything else to say there? <laughs> <laughs> what did we do? Went to two waterfalls, Ning Ning waterfalls, uh, Lecky Lecky. <laughs> and then we went to, well, no swearing on the vlog, then we went to, what's it called? I don't know, you're the one doing the vlog, not uh, me. Then we went to the big rice terraces, Jati Wulu, or something <laughs> like that, which is great, rained, we got chased by a bee, <laughs> um, quite a big bee, uh, there was a cute little dog, some, lots of cows. Oh, oh such a cute dog. Uh, yeah, it rained and then it cleared up so we got to fly the drone, which was great. Show you that and now. We an epic journey to Nung Nung Waterfall, which is halfway between Munduk and Ubud. Hour drive. <laughs> well, yeah, it's quite a long, it's quite a long trip. Just sitting in the back of a car. Yeah. Epic. Shut up. <laughs> you would get in a mood if this was you, for interrupting me all the time.